Hello YouTube. Today you and I begin a very unique journey. We're venturing into a dark and mysterious realm that most of the gaming press tries its damnedest to forget exists. A world that I merely grazed with my previous article, The Other Multiplayer. Every week here, we're going to dive headlong into a chosen title's multiplayer. We will not be covering traditional multiplayer games like StarCraft, Call of Duty, or Dota 2. No, instead we're looking in the exact opposite direction. What we're focusing on is those online communities that have stood the test of time. These are communities that have spent years without any further post-launch support, anything elaborating on the core experience, and yet they are still playing it. New games have released. In some cases, new consoles have released. We're even going to be looking into, hopefully, a few games from goodoldgames.com. Yeah. That old, some of these. These are gamers who have kept playing long after the normal expiration date. Possibly to a disturbing amount, but they still are. And we're going to try to figure out why they're still playing, and whether or not we should actually take a second look at these titles. It's not necessarily a review series, but we are going to be taking an in-depth analysis at each game. We're going to get at the heart of why these games have survived. Most of them are definitely going to be before 2013, with rare exceptions of cult hits or critical misses that somehow still remain active, despite every claim that they are horrible or should not be played, or even just are called boring. Which, for some games, is quite a death sentence all to its own. We might not always find the greatest games. Sometimes, these titles might still be active, but there's positively no reason for it. But regardless, we're going to find out why they are still alive. First up on our list is none other than Sniper Elite V2 on PC. Now, it should be noted that this game got a bit of a shot in the arm thanks to it being re-released for free to promote Sniper Elite 3. That said, considering how few servers I found populated, I don't think it actually had that much of an impact. At most, around 12 servers are still up and running thanks to the game's player base. For those who don't realize, or who primarily play on console, the ability to host custom servers also means plenty of unique rules for each different playset. Outside of a few games like Warhawk, this has been all but extinct. So, you could have a custom rule set where it's only sniper rifles, and there's no aim assist, and there are no explosives. You could have a purist sniping fest, or you could even require people only be able to use pistols and machine guns, and have to use the various tools available to them. It's whatever you want it to be, which is great, and it really does emphasize the very customizable nature of the game's gameplay. This also ties into the game having no progression system, instead favoring a basic loadout system that, while somewhat determined, as I said, by some custom servers, for ones that run by the default, you can pretty much use whatever you prefer. There is a weight system for some of the stuff you're using, but basically it just means that you can't carry around four grenades at once and just frag everybody. This all sounds very good, probably to anyone who is a classic multiplayer gamer who's not a huge fan of the progression systems of Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And it shows Rebellion understands especially how PC gamers like to have their multiplayer. Often, a major complaint for multiplayer games on PC is the lack of custom server support, and it actually does dramatically impact whether or not an online community sticks around for longer. Unfortunately, that's when the gameplay waltzes in like a drunken best friend who you know means well, but just keeps screwing everything up. To understand why people keep coming back to this is to understand what they are putting up with and how they've overcome it. The problem with Sniper Elite 2's multiplayer isn't that it's horrible per se, but that its game design and execution is questionable at best. Let's start with the key fundamental. Respawns. Respawning in and of itself is a fairly simple concept. Whenever you run out and get killed, you respawn at either a predefined location on a map, which you can select in some games, or wherever your enemies are least active, like when you're playing a free-for-all game. 
Except Sniper Elite V2 doesn't so much do this. Numerous times, it responds you within 20 meters of where you last died. Some positions even blatantly open for getting killed at the same angle. Or within distance that you can get punched by the guy who shot you last. This means that, especially on some maps, spawn camping is so frequent you start to feel bad for anyone on the team getting camped. This is even worse considering this is a sniping game. So if your opponents have a good lead on you in that corner, and there's only one way out, I sure hope you enjoy bullet sandwiches. There's nothing you can do. The map and level design just does not in any way allow you to go out of there. It has only one flow to it, and that flow is right into a stream of bullets. And in reference to being punched by said shooter that I mentioned before, I spawned less than five feet away from him. This is game-breaking for modes like Team Deathmatch, where the very objective is nothing but taking pot shots at your opponents. Some of the game's maps really have an issue with this, like the rail yard map that constantly spawns everyone in the same railhouse, and a bombed-out town map that very blatantly has no sense of flow to it, aside from in the very center area. The rest of it is just basically spawners like you would have for non-player characters. Except, you're not fighting non-player characters. You're fighting humans, who can get frustrated and rage quit. So why do players put up with this level of mistaken design? Because it's a very fundamental thing. If you can't respawn properly, then you can't do anything else in the game. It's the starting point of every new life. Well... As you'll see from some of the footage I'm showing, there are still a few active clans in the game. Most of the ones I encountered didn't speak English, so I couldn't really gauge why they were still playing through conversation. Those who did speak English mainly threw around vulgarities, save for one match where I had some genuinely cooperative teammates. Otherwise, be prepared to be called all manner of things, even the C word, for asking for help. I'm not making that up. I wish I was. Most of the average players in Sniper Elite V2 fall into two categories. I'm going to warn you now that these two types of players are going to show up in a fair amount of these games. As much as I hate to admit it, even some of the best ones are really going to be dominated by this. The pro who can't stop playing, and the newbie who just bought the game. The pro is someone so good at the game that if it were something like Call of Duty, he'd have every achievement and in-game toy unlocked after prestiging ten times. The noob is some poor gamer on a budget or just a casual browser through the used cheap game market who thought the title sounded interesting and decided to venture online. When these two types of players collide, it ends up resulting usually in the noob leaving, but there are almost always guaranteed to be more like him or her that will be target practice for the pro. The pro does not care if they are turning off every other player. They're concerned about getting their objective done and winning. They have no concern for anything else. Nine times out of ten, they could give less than a flying frack whether or not they are ruining the experience for you. Especially in this game. Since the majority of any multiplayer game's fan base is novice to moderate players, once they've moved on, and they normally will when a new sequel and or new game has come around, such as the case with Sniper Elite 3 releasing, this means only the diehards who refuse to get into Sniper Elite 3 for whatever reason, and the unsuspecting victims who just got it for free or for cheap are left to populate the servers. The buffer that kept games balanced and made skill advancement easy are gone. Because that's what any novice to moderate player is. You are the buffer. You are what keeps the game balanced. In reality, you really, really are. Because you'll kill the pro enough times that the newbie doesn't constantly get spammed to death. But you also are a slightly easier target for them to kill. So every now and then, they can get you. Without that, it's like trying to eat a sandwich with just the bread. And one side of the bread is uncooked the other side is burnt. Sadly, moderates are the first to go in alternate multiplayer venues. 
they plateau at a certain skill level, and they move on. I know. I've been one of them in a few cases. Most recently, Assassin's Creed 4. I got to rank 43 very quickly when I was playing it, but due to time limitations thereafter and a declining interest level, I moved on. And that's actually been the case with, for a perfect example, every Assassin's Creed game since Brotherhood. If you were to log into Revelations or Assassin's Creed 3, you'd see incredibly low player base, and almost everyone is either bottom level or maximum level. So even in very popular multiplayer games, if they're even slightly alternate, you see this happen. It's only in super popular, outlasting, a decade probably, sort of games like Counter-Strike and Call of Duty and Team Fortress 2 that you don't see this happen, because there's just that large enough a player base that it can retain and defy every loss. Now you're probably wondering, but you're doing this series, couldn't you go back into it and do it? Yes, yes in theory, but for most people, they wouldn't try to get into it, or if they did, they'd go back into it, realize just how much of their skill level they've lost over the years, and then go away from it. So, someone could have been super awesome at, say, playing Battlefield 2142, but then they log in, and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know which one of these items to use, and then they just ran into the battlefield, and they're doing horribly. It immediately turns them off, even worse than before, and they walk away. It basically requires you to relearn skills, and in some cases, completely relearn your playstyle, because you're a different person than you were when you were playing it then, and that alone can impact significantly. Now, for the pros, this isn't a problem, as they've kept playing to the point where the game is almost automatic for them. They have everything memorized. They know every motion to make. You can try to come up with something to outsmart them. You can try to think of something they haven't thought of, but you're probably not going to think of it. At best, you'll beat them to the... At best, you'll beat them to the punch, and then you might get a kill or two. Then their buddies will immediately kill you. They'll know every single exploit, they'll know every single glitch, and they'll know every single perk and ability that they can use and abuse that they know that most people aren't going to be able to utilize. This has existed in many games, be it the telekinesis elephant gun combo in Bioshock 2, the javelin gun plus spamming alternate fire in Dead Space 2, or in this case, pretty much knowing every single level like the back of your hand in Sniper Elite V2, because if you know where, oh, if I get killed there, I'll get stuck in that spawn camping zone, you just know not to go there, and you won't walk into it. Whereas everyone else is going to walk into them, then you repeatedly kill them, and then they, instead of trying to figure out a way around it, they're just going to get annoyed, because they're not having fun. And, unfortunately, so long as that feed drip of noobs keeps coming in, the cycle continues, almost endlessly. It doesn't matter if someone even, you know, like, try to publicly states, this game has problems, like, I'm saying this here right now, but there are going to be hundreds of players, if not thousands, who may or may not at some point snag Sniper Elite V2, over the course of this year, log into the multiplayer out of curiosity, and get their asses handed to them. A very small percentage will stand up and actually do decently, because there's always someone who's going to have a certain affinity to the game, regardless of how long they've been playing. But that's a very small percentage, and considering how small the player base is now, they might not stick around that long anyway. So in the end, it's Basically, it's like in Dota, when you have a really bad teammate, and they're just feeding the other guys. These newbies walking into these sorts of games when they're bad, and it's only the pro players who just keep playing, and you couldn't tell yourself why they are, they are the feeders who are just going in, thinking they're going to have fun, and doing horribly. I wish I had nicer things to say for the opening episode of this series, but... I just really can't, because it's these fundamentals that are broken. And some of them, Rebellion could have accounted for, like the respawns. But some of them, they couldn't as much. 
community is something a developer can have a serious impact on, but it's still going to decline over the years. Even fairly popular multiplayer games that are still very active, like Killzone 3, their forums are near dead. Their community very rarely communicates. Most of their clans have moved on to Killzone Shadowfall already, and are probably ready for the next game to come out. It's unfortunately the way of things. I, I wish it could work differently. I wish that it could be more positive. In a few cases it is. In a few cases it is. But in this case, not so much. Now, the game also comes with a number of cooperative modes where two snipers can team up online. But to date, other than Caleb, my go-ahead and energy for the site, I've only been able to find one other person in the matchmaking lobby for co-op. Unlike the competitive modes, for one thing, everything is very console-style multiplayer. There's no match browsing, and the overall functionality of the interface just is so much more lacking and so much more streamlined in a way that really just is head-scratching at times. This makes sense, though, since the co-op was made for consoles and PC. Originally, competitive multiplayer was added only post-launch to the console versions. It was actually not expected to come to console versions. But it's just so silly to find a partner in co-op. It got to the point where I had to actually ask Caleb to reinstall his game and test it with me. That was the only way I actually had to try most of the modes before I found that one person. And that was the only person I found out of, I think, over an hour's worth of time waiting. And once again, while well, Rebellion... They were trying to make something compelling to fit the audience. Because a lot of these are styled after Horde mode. But with twists, they try to add a sniping element to it. But they just become boring because the enemy design is monot- It's pretty much the same three types of Nazis and a bunch of really small claustrophobic levels for a sniping game. There are campaign missions that have longer stretches of territory than these isolated co-op levels. One mode has one player playing as the sniper, and the other is the spotter who can only carry a pistol and SMG. Another is just traditional horde mode, but with AI snipers spawning in buildings every now and then, and levels slightly dynamically opening up a little here and there as you reach certain waves. You can also play through pretty much the entire campaign with a friend, although it pulls a Halo 2 co-op where, yes, there's a person who can cooperatively play with you, but they are never present, they are never acknowledged, even though they are given a distinctive appearance. Really, though, just the most damning thing is, there's a brief thrill at first, because you're sniping enemies, and it does the quick camera zoom as you hit them, but by the tenth wave, you're more bored than you were frustrated with the competitive mode. At least, pro-sniping repeatedly gets your heart pumping. Co-op does the exact opposite and removes practically any tension the game had going for it. If you get shot down... Your ally can revive you, because you're both probably camping in the exact same room. If anyone tries to ambush you, one of you set a pr sets a tripwire mine. Boom. They're dead. They can't flank you. It just... Rebellion knew the right ideas for making a multiplayer that could last. But they didn't execute on it. Which is why there's such a small player base here. I wish I could say that it worked better in the single player, but... Fundamentally, throughout every part of the experience, you can always feel some things off, and you can always feel like, this game could have had a bit more time. As far as living goes, this isn't how a multiplayer game should go out. I really hate having to say that, but I can't really find any reason to justify this game's existence as an active entity. I wish I could tell you that there was something other than just a petty attempt at self-enjoyment from pros. I wish that there was some compelling gameplay aspect, or unique style of play that really lent itself to the game, or that at least some level could be appreciated, but not really. In fact, if you have played any of the more recent Metal Gear Solid games and played them online, you've had a better, similar experience to some of the game design here. A much better experience. And I don't think there's anything short of a very in-depth rebalancing and redesign and complete scrapping of some of the levels that could have helped this. So, maybe console games dodged a bullet. Prognosis. The heart's still beating, but it's grown shriveled, 
old and bitter. Best to put it out of its misery before it starts to decline further. Lessons to be learned. Sniper Elite V2 is a prime example of why solid execution is just as important as proper porting. The game is a decent port, and the multiplayer was clearly built with PC in mind. This doesn't change the fact that the game's multiplayer level design is severely lacking, that the core mechanics are not well implemented into a multiplayer scape, and that you can't take away from the fact that there's no attempt to add longevity to it all. I'm not even just referring to progression systems. I'm talking anything that could really draw you back in. If you've played a couple hours of Sniper Elite V2, you've played a hundred hours of Sniper Elite V2. There's no new layer of learning other than how to abuse the game's brokenness. You can't simply throw together some levels, a few game types, and expect it to all magically fit into place. You need to polish the experience. You need to understand what you need to change in multiplayer to fit your genre and focus while maintaining your core mechanics. Spawn camping should never be an issue. Worth digging up? Nope. Not unless you already own a copy and really, really, really can't play Sniper Elite V3 Africa for some reason. Next time, Dead Space 2.